Hey there, Dina Falcone, herbalist educator, author of Foraging and Feasting and Earthly Bodies in Heavenly Hair. And what is the theme of today's lesson? It is, I'm stepping on it, I'm stepping on it. We're in the driveway in this gravelly disturbed zone and I'm stepping on plantain, plantago major of the Plantagenaceae family. And what is amazing about plantain? It is an amazing bug bite remedy. That's what we're going to get into. You're going to learn how to ID it, how to harvest it, how to use it, how to bug bite be gone. Plantain has many uses. It's an amazing healing plant. It's even used for food. Our theme of the day though, our focus is limited to the bug bite aspect. What is the gift of plantain? What does it offer? It has soothing, cooling, anti-inflammatory, emollient, antiseptic, drawing, drying. So you have all of these energetics, all of these qualities that help the body to get rid of the irritation from a bee sting, a wasp sting, mosquitoes, etc. So I've just been bitten. Maybe a wasp stung me or a bee. Ouch! What I'm going to suggest that you do is you sit right where you've been stung if possible, if you're not near a nest or anything, and you relax if you've been stung by a bee or a, wa a wasp. So you're going to sit there and hopefully <laughs> or you get a friend and you want to pick plantain leaves. So you're going to pick a bunch of plantain leaves and enough to cover the area of the bite. If it's just one bite, you don't need that many. And then what you do is you make a poultice out of this. And I'm going to show you how to make a spit poultice. You got that? <laughs> so what that means, if you've gathered good looking, vibrant green leaves of plantain and you are going to chew it. <laughs> and you're going to chew it and chew it until you're really broken up. You're not swallowing the juice because you want the juice to put on your bite. Mm-hmm. And mm -hmm. you take that out of your mouth and you put it on that bee sting or that wasp sting or that mosquito bite. And you leave it on. Actually, what I like to do is take another leaf and just put it right over. And I hold it there and I sit there. So let's review. You've just been stung by a bee or a wasp and you are going to find some leaves very gently, slowly s sit down. You're not running around. You want to relax, calm down, sit in one place because the movement of your body will spread the venom. So you want to sit, relax, pick some plantain leaves, chew them up, put them on that bite. What this does is it miraculously pulls the venom out. It chills out that bite. It's amazing. For wasps that are a little bit more um, intense, like the paper wasps, I've done this, but I've actually had to sit with it for about 20 minutes and reapply it, do it again with a bee sting. This app, you know, you can just alleviate the issue in probably five minutes. So that's the technique, right? You get some fresh, vibrant looking leaves, chew them up, make a spit poultice, put that on your bite nice and oozy and you sit and relax. Got that? <laughs> okay. So we're ready. We can release the spit poultice and our bug bite is nice and happy. <laughs> okay. Things to consider. Plantain leaves are available to us all year, all the growing season, I should say. Um, and even if they flowered, you can still gather vibrant, fresh looking leaves, green, not funky looking. So, uh, however, if you wanted to make plantain infused oil that then becomes a salve or just a plantain infused oil, you would gather those leaves earlier in the season before the plant begins to bloom, before it sends up its flower stalk. However, again, just to note, you can always use the leaves when they're vibrant and fresh. The use of plantain um, in herbal infused oils and salves is not part of this lesson. That's for another lesson. We're going to focus on ID now. This is what the plant looks like with seeds coming out in situ here in the ground. I'm going to actually show you close-ups, but just so you can get a sense of it in the landscape. There you go. This is plantain. I've pulled it out of the ground 
and it is a basil rosette. That means that the leaves always stay hugging the ground or just elevating slightly, but that does not have a central stem. What does arise out of the center is its flower stalk. And here you can see its flower now turning to seed. This is its seed stalk, this long spike. Um, so this is a basil rosette of plantain leaves. Plantain never grows up. And actually the leaf, the leaves, the plant diameter, you could say, ranges when it's really small, maybe to three inches, and it can go all the way to two feet. It can be quite wide. It can be a broad plant. So actually this is called broadleaf plantain. Um, okay, one other note is a lot of the leaves on this particular specimen do not look like good medicine. For example, this isn't appealing, but this one definitely is. Also, can you see this? That this is a very long leaf stem or leaf stalk called a petiole, these long leaf stalks. So you wanna note that. So let's get more macro in terms of ID features so you know you have the right plant. Here's a sample of plantain leaves for you to see. You can see their shape is pretty ovate, ovate perhaps a little bit elliptic here. We have a bit of an elliptic um, and maybe sometimes a little bit more round or bicular. They have pointy tips generally, but they're not strong points. We have a sort of a soft pointy tip and then the leaf margin itself can have sparsely irregular teeth or no teeth at all. It can also just be undulating sort of, uh, what would you say, wavy here, or it can be entire. So the leaf margin has that kind of variation to it. Um, also, you can note on all the leaves, though, that they have this radiating veining pattern. So the veins radiate out from the center here, from this leaf stalk. They come up and radiate, and they do not create a net. They're more of a yeah, a radiant pattern. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to flip this one over so you can see the backside and you really can see the prominent veins. Can you see the prominent veins here on this leaf? And this is signature. This is a signature clue for plantain leaves that we have very strong prominent veins. And I'm actually going to show you something that you can do to even further ID it in this next shot. So usually you can take a plantain leaf and you can break the stem off and you can get these long, can you see that long vein coming out, that long stringy? I'm just going to show you this kind of bouncy stringiness that you can pull out of the leaves. Last ID piece is to feel your plant, to feel your leaf and Plantain feels, this leaf actually feels extremely smooth. Sometimes there is a little bit of roughness on the top. And also, don't forget, we're going to feel those veins on the back. And then next, you want to actually smell. So you're going to bruise the plant just so gently and inhale. And what you should get is a very rich chlorophyll odor if it smells aromatic or funky in any way. It's not plantain. It should smell aromatic and kind of just lovely in a green way. And then lastly, if you know you can ID it, I mean, I don't want you to do this part of it, but I'm going to share with you what you do once you know how um, the plant should taste, so you know what it tastes like. I'm going to take a little bit. Um, the flavor is mild, not aromatic, not very bitter but slightly astringent. So it's tightening, <clears throat> yeah, tightening the tissues in there. So got that. You're looking for those clues. However, you're not going to be tasting until you're 110% sure of ID. Next, let's talk about where you're going to find this plant. Other plantago species can be used similarly. So if you've got narrow leaved plantain or seaside plantain or other species of plantago, it can be used similarly. And where are you going to find this Plantago Major, the one that we've been focusing on? It is a worldwide weed. I'm stepping on it right now. It's native to Europe, but you're going to find it all over the world. Where is its habitat? 
literally everywhere. <laughs> well, more anthropogenic sites, sites where humans are disturbing soil or creating landscapes. You're going to find it in the cracks of the city sidewalks. You're going to find it in the parking lots and lawns and fields and, and uh, meadows and so on. And it loves full sun to part shade in most soil types. So may your life be bug bite cured. <laughs> <laughs> may plantain come to the bug bike rescue for you and if you've enjoyed this and you'd like more check out my online course wild food health boosters and herbal remedies at wildfoodhealthboosters.com see you next time note plantago major likes to grow in hardiness usda zones three to nine